Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. In today's video, I want to talk about what we find truly meaningful. And I believe this, society can be roughly divided into two kinds of people. The people that believe that happiness is the ultimate goal of life. And the people that believe that career, ambition and success is the core value of life. Roughly what you can say about these two people is... One believes motivation is something internal. They have their own values, their own sense of meaning that they find in ordinary events. They go through life with certain ideas and dreams and thoughts that this is good and this is bad. This I like, this I don't like. Other people, particularly highly competitive individuals, believe that reward comes from other factors, not from what we ourselves deem to be good or bad, but from what people objectively value and reward you for doing. So some people are looking for that reward that is a higher salary, uh, a promotion at work, or some kind of recognition. What you could say is some people are looking for material sources of reward where other people are looking for internal sources of reward. You could roughly say they sorry people are hippies where other people are well regular ordinary day-to-day -day workers and success seekers or yuppies. So when talking about hippies and yuppies one thing becomes clear. So the hippie is the person that primarily has like these big dreams that can sound kind of vague or kind of unclear like what do they actually want what are they actually doing with their life are they working hard are they pushing themselves are they actually achieving anything when did they last get a promotion when did they last do anything the competitive individual can look at the hippie thinking of them as somebody that is drifting through life in a sense Achieving nothing, simply just going through it. And here what I believe is this. One particular archetype like the muse in the Enneagram represents perfectly this idea of, you know, just doing what you love and following your passion and doing what you are inspired to. Another, like the performer, the Enneagram Tree, believes in the value of success through competition and through hard work, in pushing yourself, getting out of bed in the morning, not uh, dilly-dallying, not lazing about, setting the alarm at six, getting up, going for a jog, building those muscles, getting that sweat rolling, going to work on time, and working overtime as often as you can to prove to your boss that you are doing good, that you are worth it, that you are a determined person that will go far. So you have the success-oriented individual and you have the happiness-oriented individual. And often what you'll find is that the performer is uh, deeply struggling to be happy or content. What that means is uh, no matter what they achieve, no matter what promotion they get, they can feel kind of empty. The performer is accused of vanity, of a blind pursuit of success or competition or promotion without thinking about what it is they really want from these things. What is your true inspiration? What is tr your true passion? What is it you really want with all of this? Are you just doing work just for the sake of work? Are you just putting in those extra overtime hours just for the sake of showing to other people that you put in those extra overtime hours? Is that really why you live? Is that really a way to live? Here you can compare it to what we can say is... Uh, the impossible dream. The performer might look at the muse thinking this is an impossible dream, a utopia. No person can be, uh, can achieve anything through blind inspiration or through just enjoying life and just living life to the fullest. This is not a le real life. How can they really be happy? They are just going through life. They're not actually doing anything with it. So the muse can represent an impossible dream where the performer, I think, and from a societal standpoint, is seen as the most healthy. You know, something I've noticed when I thought about health is that there are two standards of health. 
There is the societal standard, which is the healthy person is working hard, constantly bettering themselves, constantly improving themselves, constantly working out, you know, always busy, always having something to do, always out there, always working, always pushing themselves, constantly getting promoted, going to different countries, being really successful, you know. And the other dream, which is the personal idea of health, which is feeling just motivated, feeling just happy with life, feeling good about what you do, feeling joy and harmony and peace, not stressing out too much, just being able to take life in a positive, with a positivity in a sense, just saying, yeah, I'm okay, I'm fine. Just going through, yeah, okay, uh, I'm late, but big deal. Okay, I missed that appointment, but yeah, I'll make it another time. Or yeah, another person is late, but hey, I'm also late sometimes. Who, who cares, you know? Some people are just pursuing that, like, pure emotional goal. You could say this is the difference. The success-oriented person is pursuing career-oriented goals where the the muse or the helper or the utopian or the hero archetype represents people who are just pursuing pure emotional contentment. So what you can accuse the pure emotional contentment types for is that of how? Why? Why are you harmonious? Why are you helping other people? Why are you going out... Uh, why are you just enjoying life? Why are you? What does it mean to just enjoy life? What does it just mean to be happy? So the idea is, you know, you have to have a plan, you have to have concrete goals, you have to have like all those things, you know, to be happy. Like that's often how I think a lot of people see it. You need to do things to actually be happy. You need to actually be out there and going to parties and working out. To actually be a happy person. So that's why I feel often these two types cannot understand each other's or fail to understand each other's. What you want to look at it at is in terms of needs. I think some of us have been trained to need work for the sense of identity and purpose it gives. And for these people it's impossible to think that Something that wasn't work, that wasn't promotions, that wasn't uh, salaries could give them what they need. That something such as not going out tonight but staying in and reading a book could possibly make us happy. I think to rewire this question, and I want you to rewire this question, what you have to do is you have to ask yourself... Am I happy or do I just look happy? And you know, there is a difference between the appearance of happiness and the happiness itself. We think people are happy because they're constantly doing stuff, because they are high-performing individuals. But often these people are pushing themselves to their limits, never feeling happy, always is stressed out about everything that's going wrong and about not getting a salary, about not getting enough in promotion, not getting a raise, not getting a bonus, you know, not feeling acknowledged, not feeling you've done enough, not feeling you met your production criteria, not feeling you were productive enough, not feeling you put in enough overtime to make your goals, you know. A lot of people work through life with those stressors in life. And what I always try to get people to do is I want people to tune into their own needs. You know, the flow code has always been about tuning into your own needs. And that's what do I want to be happy? What do I enjoy? Do I actually enjoy my work? Do I actually enjoy producing more? Do I actually enjoy? Do I actually want that promotion? And often the answer is no. I don't want that promotion. Yeah, sure, I've worked there for five years. Yeah, sure, I'm one of the best at work. But I don't actually want a promotion because I'm happy with what I have. I'm happy with my workplace. I'm happy with my co-workers. Those tasks that I would have to do to get my promotion, I don't want those tasks. I like doing what I do. Sometimes that's the answer. Or sometimes the answer is I don't like what I do and I wouldn't like it even if I got promoted. I don't like what I do and I wouldn't like it even if I got a higher salary. 
So there's something else I want to do. What is that something else? And often what I try to tell people is to do is work less. Seek a job where you can work 32 hours, not 40. Seek a job where you can work maybe 24 hours, not 32. You know, if you can, why not? If you can live and make ends meet, and if you can, why don't you ask for lower working hours? If you have this chance, if you have this opportunity, what this what does this mean? You know, those eight extra hours you can think, yeah, it's just eight hours, but eight extra hours to make friends, to spend time with your partner, to go out, to have a good day, eight hours to stress down and relax and unwind and to get out of that work mindset. You know, do you ever find yourself constantly going up, waking up at day the morning, looking at your phone to see about your work emails? Uh, do you ever find that on your vacation your boss calls you and says you have uh, to send out an email? <laughs> have you ever noticed like all those things that are associated and considered healthy in the modern world? I think it's bizarre. I do understand we can genuinely value work and I do understand we can genuinely enjoy a promotion. Of course, I do understand these things. Of course, I'm... You might want to be a boss, you might want to be a team leader, you might want to be a manager, you might want to have like these higher salaries, or you might want to have these higher positions. Some people want to be designers, some people want to be musicians, some people want to work at an office, some people are happy by something else. Everybody has their thing, you know, that they want, that they love. But wouldn't life be better if we want, did these things because we genuinely wanted to? Not because we were paid to do it. Not because we were pushed to do it by society. Don't we have too many people out there that do work they find genuinely meaningless, unstimulating, unfulfilling? Don't we have enough bosses out there that hate their job, that suck at leading people and that would rather <laughs> quit? Don't we have enough people out there getting burnouts? Yeah, pushing themselves beyond their limits, beyond what is healthy. Can we build a society where we live for ourselves and for our own sake and not for the pursuit of pure competition or success or being better than other people? The rat race, as I see it, is an empty race and it will never make a person happy. That's why eventually everyone in the rat race eventually leaves the rat race. Because eventually everyone came, comes to the same realization. I haven't spent enough time with my family. I haven't actually devoted myself to music that I wanted to. I haven't actually been to that country I really wanted to go explore. And uh, in this there's a big emptiness, you know. What are the biggest regrets at people's deathbeds? It's not not cashing in extra overtime. Never. Never. So what I'm looking to do is uh, perhaps promote a small revolution in how we think. Perhaps I want you to end this video thinking how can I work less and be more fulfilled and more happy? Or how can I get a job where I can be happy? How can I switch from thinking I want a higher salary to telling my boss no I don't need a higher salary but if you can get me to work 4 hours less for the same salary I'll take that as well. Perhaps, and I believe this is true, if we can work less, we can also do more in less time. Because, you know, that's something people see. In a lot of companies, when they work less, they can also achieve more. The companies also start producing more. Because people are more happy and do more with the hours they do have. And perhaps that's something I've always been talking about. I've always been talking about the flow code and increasing consciousness. What, has, what that means to me is just... You know, spending and valuing every hour you have. Enjoying and making the most out of every minute. Even those minutes you cash in at work. Like even those 32 hours you cash in with phone calls and customer service or at, at Burger King vending burgers, you know. Even those should be fun and feel enjoyable and worthwhile. And if you work 32 hours, they might actually do. But if, they, if you work 40 hours... Those hours might start seeping down and weighing on you and making you stressed and bored. And that might get you to be less mindful and to have less flow. So that's the shift I'm proposing. 
I hope you like it. I hope you can stand with it. I hope even if you do value work and even if you do find these things to be good, you can see where I'm coming from. You can perhaps find in work more value than what you did before. Perhaps you can start focusing from content, from production, to quality, to what you do, to what makes you happy at work. That's the shift I propose. Thanks for watching this video and if you do like it, leave a like, share and subscribe with other people. I hope to see you all in the next video.